The Small Cap Power Expert Interview. Here we are in March of 2014 and gold is up almost 15% since the beginning of the year. What's caused this rally? Well, if you remember, we talked about uh, gold. Uh, gold does well under two scenarios, when there is fear and when there is fear for inflation. Right now, there is uh, no such fear for inflation in particular, but there is fear for geopolitical risk, uh, as, as you know, uh, relating to Russia and, and, and Russia and, and its uh, stand in Ukraine. So there has been some uh, level of uh, concern that uh, there may be some risks coming back. Uh, we don't uh, forget so quickly that what happened in, in Europe in, in 2013 and before that in 2012. Uh, so there are, there are some concerns about, about uh, uh, geopolitical risk uh, being high and gold does well when there is uh, concerns. Most analysts have been predicting a relatively bad year for gold with the average price predicted to be around 1200 per ounce for the 2014 year end. What are your thoughts? If only we knew better. You know, if you, if you have to pick one contrarian uh, indicator, that would be analyst uh, average uh, price for anything. And, and when everybody's saying that gold will be $1,200, uh, you have to take that uh, with a grain of salt. Nobody really knows, uh, in, in my view, uh, if, if, you, if you see what, what they, they predicted uh, when gold was going high, was uh, you know, uh, all, all, all time high and, and over $2,000 uh, an ounce. And then we all know what happened in, in 2013. So same thing, in 2014, I would uh, uh, not go uh, that uh, uh, you know, strongly with the analyst average prediction about gold prices. So there are lots of other factors to consider. Um, uh, in our view, the range would be somewhere between 1200 to 1600 uh, price range, and gold will probably do better in second half of the year um, uh, than it was predicted. China recently overtook India as the largest consumer of gold, according to the World Gold Council. What does this say about future prospects for gold? Well, it says the future prospects are bright for gold. Uh, if you remember, uh, India used to be the largest consumer of, consumer of gold for, for a long time, and, and now China has overtaken. Um, last year, in 2013, uh, demand for physical gold in China went up by 32% and crossed more than 1,000 tons uh, a year. Uh, India is almost about uh, the same, same level, at about uh, 1,000 ton a year as well. So between those two countries, uh, we see demand going up sharply year over year when gold prices fell. So that means that uh, uh, there is a strong demand for physical gold. Uh, people in China and India uh, are getting richer on, on, uh, every day. And they still believe in gold as a store of value. So we feel that that is a very bullish uh, indicator for gold. Again, here we are in March of 2014, and what do you expect gold to do during the remainder of the year? Well, gold prices have a surprise so far on the upside. Uh, even for us, we were thinking of gold facing some headwinds in the, in the short term, and it has remained quite strong in, in 2014 so far, up about 15% from, from, the, from the year end 2013. Now, we do see uh, the fear of, of, of any, any escalation of confrontation between Russia and, and other countries uh, will further push gold prices. But if those fears are, are, are not met, then you can see some downward pressure on gold prices. So we, we think that gold will do a little bit of round, uh, range bound uh, type of thing in, during the first half. And then second half will depend on what happens on the inflation front. And we are seeing some signs that Western countries, especially US, is picking up steam in terms of uh, growth. And if that happens, uh, there would be some inflation fear coming back uh, into the markets, and that will really help gold. So we remain optimistic, uh, cautiously, but optimistic for gold um, uh, prices in 2014. So our range is about uh, uh, 12 to 1600 is the range, but we do expect gold to close around 1400 in, in 2014. Where should investors look for opportunities if they want exposure to gold? Investors should look for some exposure to gold between 5 to 10 percent of their portfolio in our view. Uh, the, the, the way to get, get some gold exposure could be through some, some exposure to exchange traded funds. There are some really good ones um, and, and also through, through some physical gold. So you can buy some gold uh, coins. Uh, there are places like Scotia Bank has has gold certificates and, 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 and uh, products which are uh, physical uh, gold based. But the biggest opportunity would be um, um, a junior gold exploration company which have uh, good projects, advanced projects, and uh, they would do really well if gold uh, does well.
Do you have any favorite companies that you can mention for our viewers? Yes, absolutely. In the past, uh, we mentioned uh, two uh, gold producers, uh, intermediate gold producers, uh, Argonaut and, and Alamos, and we continue to like them. Uh, Alamos actually has come off uh, from the high levels. Uh, it could be a good uh, potential entry for, for um, uh, investors looking at um, uh, those companies. But we would like to add two new names, which we have been looking at and, and, and find interesting. One is uh, Treasury Metals, which, which has a project in, in Ontario, in uh, Dryden District. Uh, they are an advanced uh, exploration company. They are, um, uh, looking, they are working on, towards the banking feasibility study. Um, they, they, they have a legitimate chance to be the next gold producer in, in, in Ontario in the next couple of years. The company is well-funded and uh, has a resource, 1.7 million uh, ounces, and uh, fairly um, uh, advanced permitting process as well. Uh, the company is, is led by a good team, so that's a good company which we are looking at. Uh, investors should know that Treasury Metal is a covered company on a smallcappower.com, which is a portal for Ubica Research content. Uh, investors can check out Treasury Metal's uh, hub on a smallcappower.com for um, further information. And uh, finally, a company which we have uh, come across uh, is called Dynacore. Uh, it's uh, listed on TSX. Uh, it has a market cap of about $70 million. Uh, it's a very interesting company. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it has a gold processing uh, unit in, in Peru. What the company does is it, it buys ore from different uh, producers or, or, or artisan uh, mines and then processes in its uh, milling facility in Peru. The company has about 10 million in cash, uh, produces uh, very good cash flow. Uh, it, it had 22 uh, cents uh, earning per share in 2012 and expecting around 20 cents again in 2013. Cash flow of about 9 million a year. A uh, very good way for a company of that size to keep uh, advancing uh, the shareholder value without being dilutive. It doesn't need to go to the capital markets to raise more money. And it has planned to expand uh, the processing unit, but also has interest in some very interesting exploration opportunities in, in Peru. So that, that is a company which we, we also uh, like, uh, and investors can, investors can look at that as well. Thank you for taking the time for the interview, Vikas. Thank you. Keep up to date with all your favorite small caps. Subscribe to our free daily newsletter featuring investment ideas, breakout stocks, analyst research, and more. Smallcappower.com. Investing ideas and research.